picture. This is the picture that um, I happened across that I think probably could represent most of us, uh, at least at some point in many of our days. And I know there were many times when I felt that about not necessarily just about the person who had dementia, but about anybody else who wanted to um, say anything or ask anything of me at that point in time. What we're going to talk about today, though, is making difficult decisions. There are lots of decisions that you make when you're a caregiver. In fact, probably most of us would say that we're making decisions that, that the number reflects that we're making decisions that two people would usually make because you usually are making a decision for both you and your person living with dementia. This is, gets even more true uh, as time progresses and you take on more and more of the roles or the things at home that your person living with dementia typically did. And not only is that more responsibility, but it is more decisions for you to make. So we end up feeling like all we do all day long is make decisions. Think for a minute about the decisions you probably have already made today. For example, what do I fix him for breakfast that he'll be interested in eating? Do I wake her up or do I let her sleep? Is this the day to try the pens again to see if we can make some progress? While these examples are important, and they do impact on our everyday life, there are also some huge decisions that many of us are eventually faced with. Things like, do we keep taking this medication or stop it now? Is it time to hire someone to come into the home to help with care? And what will that mean? Or perhaps the most difficult decision of all, is it time to consider placement in some kind of long-term care setting? The intent of the lesson today is not to provide you with the specific information that you might need to make some of those huge decisions, but to give you a framework and some general information about making decisions and how to approach decisions that are big and the small everyday decisions that you make for your, you and your loved one. Most of us really do like to make our own decisions. When we can decide things for ourselves, it makes us feel more in control. But somehow making all those decisions as a dementia caregiver doesn't make us feel more in control. In fact, sometimes it makes us feel more out of control. Because many decisions in day-to-day -day life are dependent upon having the cooperation of the person living with dementia to carry them out. And we can't always predict whether we have any cooperation at all from that person. Making decisions kind of fits in the category of what someone I used to work with was prone to say, this is another thing that I'm being forced to do against my will. We feel out of control, so out of control that we really feel like we have decision overload. Sometimes we just wanna scream, do what you wanna do. Don't ask me to make one more decision or just do whatever, it won't make any difference anyway. Sound familiar? Do you know that there's an actual well-documented entity called decision fatigue? That's a psychological condition in which making too many decisions in the present reduces your ability to make decisions in the future. John Tierney, who wrote a book that was um, on the New York Times bestseller list for a while entitled Willpower, says this about the decision fatigue. Decision fatigue helps explain why ordinarily sensible people 
get angry at colleagues and families, splurge on clothes, buy junk food at the supermarket, and can't resist the dealer's offer to rust proof your new car. No matter how rational and high minded you try to be, you can't make decision after decision without paying a biological price. It's different from ordinary physical fatigue. You're not consciously aware of being tired, but you're very low on mental energy. If you're just too overwhelmed and low on mental energy, then your brain starts to take shortcuts when you're faced with decisions. These shortcuts tend to favor short-term gain of just getting the decision off your plate. Decision fatigue can lead people to put off making decisions, avoid making decisions entirely, or default to an automatic response. Any of these responses can result in our maintaining the status quo or having the decisions made by the circumstances themselves. Another shortcut that our brain takes when it's overwhelmed is not thinking through the consequences of a decision. In this situation, you're more apt to make impulsive or irrational decisions. Let's go back to that example from the uh, quote that I just gave you earlier. You're at the supermarket. By the time you get to the checkout, you've made many decisions. Looked at what's on sale. Is it better to buy this brand or that brand? Where can I be get the best price? Will this be better to have for dinner tonight or that? So by the time you get to the checkout, you're already tired of making decisions. Guess what happens? Your willpower's low and you're surrounded by all that candy and junk stuff as you stand there waiting to check out. Makes it real easy to just grab something you really didn't intend to get. Did you know that sweet snacks are intentionally placed close to the checkout line for this very reason? Decision fatigue has similar effects on us as lack of sleep. There's a sense of deep weariness and it diminishes our ability to be in control of our emotions, to handle interpersonal relationships, or to multitask. It also inhibits our initiative and our ability to come up with creative solutions and think outside the box. In other words, we just decide to do anything, anything that's easy at the time without caring what that decision means for the future. My personal experience in making decisions on this basis is that they've not resulted in many shining moments for me. Routine, routine decisions when we are made, when, that are made when we're so brain fatigued may not cause any disaster or increase our feelings of guilt, but making those big decisions without the appropriate amount of brain energy certainly can. So what do you do when you have one of those really important and difficult decisions to make. Let's talk about a process that will help you think through and analyze your options in those difficult decisions. The first thing is eliminate as many decisions as possible from your day. How do you do that? As a caregiver, this is good general advice even on day-to-day -day survival. Here's some ways that that can happen. Establish routines. Routines automatically limit or eliminate many of the decisions that you have to make and the choices that you have. This works best when you are talking about decisions about things that are predictable, such as meal times, bath, or clothes to wear. What difference does it make if you eat the same thing every Tuesday? And think about Steve Jobs, who most of us would consider was a pretty successful person. He always wore a black turtleneck, 
blue jeans, and New Balance shoes. Even Albert Einstein had several variations of the same gray suit. And why did they have these? So they didn't have to waste brain power on making clothing decisions every day, but saved that energy for their work. When we think about establishing routines, people with dementia generally do better with routines anyway. So that's really not a bad overall thing to do. Simplify those things that you can. There are many, especially as a result of the pandemic, many more options that are available to us for simplifying some things than there have been in the past. Order your groceries instead of going to the grocery store. Look at pharmacy auto refills or coordination of refills so that you aren't dealing with what's going on with medication every time you turn around. Look at delivery of prescription medication. Get as much information from your medical care provider about what to expect next with your loved one as possible and what changes might require a call to the provider's office. This is also true when new medications are started. Knowing what to expect and when to call instead of having to try to decide that for yourself makes life much easier. Pay attention to which decisions aren't likely to have a high impact on you or your loved one or aren't vitally important and delegate those decisions to someone else if possible. Maybe a friend or family member could plan some menus for you, wash clothes, or shop for groceries. The next thing to do that's helpful is to establish realistic goals. That's really hard, I think, when we're dealing with dementia because what seems realistic one day doesn't necessarily seem realistic the next. But in general, don't dream of the impossible. For example, don't debate whether you should go on a cruise or not, when your loved one gets confused about where the bathroom is in their own house. Maybe a short day trip or a half day trip to a favorite place that's close by is the best you and he can manage at this point in time. Ask yourself, what is possible given the current status of my loved one's dementia and my physical and mental health at this point in time. Then gather information. Make a list of all the options that you and those close to you can think of. Look for unbiased information about the pros and the cons of each of these options. Ideally, a close friend or family member can help you gather that information. Bounce options and thoughts off someone you trust. There was a study done by Harvard Business School where the researchers looked at 50 years worth of judgment and decision-making research. And the one piece of advice that kept coming up over and over again was to get another person's opinion. Write down the pros and cons of all the options that you have. Sometimes the answer to the decision becomes apparent just when you list that information out. Play what we call the best friend game with yourself. What would you say to your best friend if they were asking you the same questions that you're now asking? And remember that your priority for solutions should go to the answers that minimize the negative effects on birth, both the person with dementia and the caregiver's health or safety. Pull back from the chaos. <laughs> Easier said than done when you're a dementia caregiver. We all need time to clear our heads without interruption. Ideally, you can find some time to think through and make decisions early in the day when hopefully you're less tired and before you've used so much of your mental energy. If that won't work, at least try to find some free time that's where there's no interruption. That might be time at night when your person is in bed or 
a time when another family member or caregiver can take over for a while and you can physically get out of the situation. Then after you do all this, make a decision and implement it. Don't get caught in what's called analysis paralysis. And that's one of the things for me personally, I have to guard against. I like to research. I like to know what I was out there. And sometimes I can go down that rabbit hole instead of saying, stop, you have all the information you need to make the decision, now do something with it. You might need to set a specific deadline for making the decision in order to make it happen. For example, by four o'clock next Monday, I'm going to decide this. Making any decision will help move you forward and lower your anxiety. The best antidote to feeling overwhelmed is forward momentum. And, and this is a really, really important point that I'm getting ready to make. Few decisions, even those that involve the person with dementia are absolutely irrevocable. Decide how much time you need to realistically know whether the solution is working. And realistically is the most important word here. The time frame might be set by a provider if you're making a medication change, or it may be the one, one that you decide on for yourself if you're hiring help at home or looking at a temporary or a permanent placement. Understand that knowing whether some solutions work or not may take weeks, even if you would prefer that it only take days or even hours. Evaluate the results of all your decisions. Don't look for perfection. We are all human after all. Remember that the bottom line of decision-making means deciding what to do that offers the best outcome based on what we know right now. It means doing your best and understanding that your best also includes taking care of yourself. It really means believing that your life matters as much as the life of the person for whom you are caring. After all, you're both in this together. <laughs>